flight simulator. Flight simulators, of course, are one of the premier products uh, for people who want to fly planes but don't have the money to go to the flight school. In fact, you, you pretty much can learn to fly a plane with a flight simulator. Microsoft dominated the market. There have been a few other companies, but we're going to show you right now a great story, a story about a plucky little company for the last 10 years has been doing really one of the best flight simulators out there. And it, not only for Windows, but for Mac, too, ladies and gentlemen, from X-Plane, Austin Meyer, the guy behind the program, has been doing it for 10 years. It's great to have you. Welcome well, nice to the meeting show. you. X-Plane.com, right? X-Plane.com. Got to remember the little hyphen there. You distribute it yourself uh, on yeah, the web? through the web page. Yeah. Uh -huh. X-Plane.com. And I think it's I a really it. neat story. How long have you been doing this? 10 years? Uh, about 10 years. Started it back in uh, college. Um, back when I wasn't quite happy with just a tiny few little things in Microsoft Flight. So you said I'm going to write it one myself and better? I, I said, well, I can either get Microsoft to do it my way or I can do it myself. If and, you uh, knew then what you know now about how much work this has taken, would you still have done it? Not unless I knew how much fun it would be to do it. You're enjoying it as well? <laughs> oh, absolutely. How much programming time has gone into this? Well, I, you know, of course, when you run your own business, the business runs you. You don't run the business. Yeah. I mean, I probably put in maybe 12 to 16 hour days. Maybe five or six hours a day of that is actually coding. Five now, But you do five hours a day? Still, actual code. it's not oh, like yeah. done. You're not done with it. You There's no such thing. Five hours a day, five days a week? Uh, seven days a week. There's Every no day. such thing as a holiday or a weekend. You're right? not married, it all kind of I blurs together. <laughs> no, no family. No. This is your I life. Got family, not married family. Yeah, this family is your, this is your life. Wow. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and let's, well, actually, let's take a look at it. We're sure. running it uh, right now on the Macintosh just to show you can. This is what, uh, 747? Yeah, it looks like we have 747 on autopilot. Watch this. Watch this. Feet. You can change the view. We're going we're gonna to fly, do the view where they fly right at you. And of course, oh. there's tons of different views. It looks like somebody left the landing gear extended by mistake. Whoops, a little that wasn't me. <laughs> now, I think so, it was me. So air traffic oh, no, control. We're hearing air traffic control in the background as well, right? Yeah, that's correct. we got a couple different types of air traffic control in X-Plane. One is like this artificially intelligent air traffic control that will like guide you wherever you have to go. But also, I've just got some random kind of radio transmissions in the background for atmosphere. That's what we got now because I'm not going to try and fly a whole air traffic control <laughs> flight plane here. We'd but be you about two hours. real air traffic control. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really yeah just and it sounds very realistic. Oh, yeah. So this, uh, this is the normal cockpit view. Let's show it mm -hmm. on uh, Windows, too, because uh, sure. we have a little faster Windows machine here. Oh, absolutely. Where are we now? Okay, so we're at San Bernardino. I chose San You're Bernardino as my airport because there's some mountains and stuff in the background. And that's now, not a 747. This what is a 777. This is Boeing's Ooh. absolute latest and greatest. Brand that's new neat. machine. Um, the engines each put out over 100,000 pounds of thrust. Wow. Um, that's, that's per engine. It's, now, this uh, is a fly-by-wire plane, right? You're not yes. actually controlling the ailerons. That's almost true. What the fly-by-wire system does is it augments your control inputs. Okay. So let's say I command a 20% nose up or a 20% stick back deflection. What the elevators will do is say, well, sure, Austin wants a 20% deflection, but I'm going to tack on another 10% to make it fly just right so it feels good to him. It helps you out. It helps and, you out. And you do that in the program. So if you're flying a, a Piper Cub, it doesn't do that, obviously. Absolutely not. And, and if you're flying a 777, it does do that. And you're flying an F-16 or an F-22, it does it even more because those are different things that really need the computer you be not only a great program, because this is among the toughest 3D programming out there, but you also yep. have to know airplanes. Correct. You have to know aerospace. How do you know all this stuff? Well, I'm kind of lucky in that um, I was able to get my private pilot's license back when I was 15 so or 16 years old. Yeah, yeah, I got about 650 hours single engine propeller airplanes. Uh, got you my ever fly a triple seven? Uh, I've flown the simulator that the pilots have use you? to get oh, their certification. Cool. Oh, that's so, cool. So, um, as far as the FAA is concerned, that's the same thing for log and flight time. So you're a, you're an actual pilot. Uh huh. You're obviously a proficient programmer. C plus plus. Yeah. Is that what this Thanks is? Thanks to Carnegie in? Mellon. Took a couple courses at Carnegie Mellon in computer programming. So I got to be a pretty, pretty darn sharp computer programmer. And then you have a degree in aerospace. Degrees in aerospace engineering, Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa. So you really ca now that's one of the things that's amazing about you. I mean, I'm sure Microsoft has at least a hundred programmers working on flight sim. You're a one man job. I, yep. Well. We gotta say hi to Jim or Mike, rather, who is here. Mike, Mike, Mike Brown, also, he does my shipping. He puts the stuff in the boxes. Okay, so. But there's more people than that that help me out. You <laughs> but know? basically, you're the programmer. I wrote all the code, but I got Ben Supnik, who does my algorithm. Sergio Santagada, an Italian fellow who does the textures. Mohammed Ghazawi, he enters. He does, from we should Kuwait. Give, he give him credit because he does. He does these beautiful. Yes, yeah, Sergio Santagada does oh, those panels. Just Mohammed panels. Ghazawi, Kuwaiti fellow, inputs the designs to more detail and precision than I ever could. Um, Pierre Michel, he does the algorithms to take the United States American government databases, filter them through, hand them to me in a form I can easily use. There's How a lot many, of people so you have all the, the airport. How many airp airports oh, do you about, have in here? Oh, I got about 20,000 airports. See let's see. This is great. I love sure. this. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, like, for example, we can say, all right, let's go on ahead and say, you know, VFR final. Look at all these. And these are just a couple of airports. But wait a minute. So it's, this is Earth. 
Show us Mars. Oh, why do you want to stick to Earth? Amen to that. Let's go ahead and switch to Mars. You know, the, the United States Geological Survey gave us Earth. The FAA gave us the airports. NOAA gave us the uh, nav aids. NEMA gave us the roads. And now NASA gave us Mars. Flying. Now, is the gravity different? Is the, oh, is the airlift different? Because It's the, all different. It, absolutely. It's, 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 it's technically true to the actual situation. Oh, oh yes, for sure. Um, wow, that's amazing. What, you, what we have is, um, well, first Could of all. Could a 777 no, take off? No, and for a minute I was panicking for a second because I went to full throttle and nothing, nothing happened. Cause there's Why? There's only 1% of the air density. <laughs> a 777's not going to get in the you air in Mars. You need something different to fly. we got to get in a Mars plane. Oh. So now let's go and hit file menu, open this aircraft. So fun. Why don't we go over to the Mars planes folder? I'm going to take the Mars uh, rocket here. There's two sure. different ways that I have designed, a jet and a rocket. We're going to okay. take the rocket because it's a little quicker. All right, so <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and get on the gas, is get this off fun? the brakes. Now we're going to fly. So oh, here we man. are. Let's go in ahead. Now, you said there was something wrong with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Microsoft Flight Simulator. What were Did the I things? Did that What way? were the issues? Oh, oh, what were oh, the okay. issues? Look at this. Look at this. So Whoa. here we are racing down the runway in a rocket-powered plane on Mars. We're what going were the issues the that you wanted to fix? Amazingly, the issues that I wanted to fix with Microsoft were so minor that there's really nothing wrong with the sim. The sim just didn't do quite what I wanted it to do. Basically, some of the handles and controls on the instrument panel, they were perfectly well placed for, say, a Cessna 172. But the airplane that I was flying at the time was a Piper Archer. So you wanted the layout, to make it look like an Archer. a little more customizable. There's nothing wrong with the sim. It just wasn't so customized to my needs. You're going to stall out, aren't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Well, when you got when you got these kind of I rocket guess it's engines hard to pushing stall with you, a though. Yeah, when you got rocket <laughs> engines pushing you up through Mars, there's only one third the gravity, 1% the air density. See, but, you out. know, boatloads of thrust, you can go up like a homesick angel. But um, Now, uh, Microsoft has sold millions of copies of their flight that's simulator. That's correct. Yeah, that's you're true. You're not as big as they are. I, I think you ought to be, frankly, because I think you're... And uh, will be in time. I think you're... Well, and you've been around for 10 years. 10 it's a years, better program. Every year is better than the year before, uh, yeah. Really, it is. Oh, you're absolutely. Growing. Absolutely. We were talking before the, the show... You worry about piracy because you're not you're not copy protected. You know, I kind of look at it as my mission in life. My mission in life is to put out a tool that people can use to en encourage, educate, empower themselves, make an awesome sim that people can use. Right. Eh, worrying about people copying CDs, this is not where I'm going to put my time. Yeah, and um, I think the it's truth about is, the, program, not the, the person who pirates this casually is going to throw it aside. Anybody who take, takes a copy, plays it, is going to want to send you the money because. Absolutely. It is, I mean, it's obviously a labor of love on Austin's part, and I Absolutely. think anybody who's going to play with it is going to feel the same way. How Absolutely. much, you don't charge very much. How much is the program? Uh, actually, I just updated my website about two hours ago. I lowered the price to $49.99. I mean, it's a great cents. deal. It's just a anybody great that just sees, oh, explain on Tech TV, they can go and order it without X even having to worry about the money. Plane dot com. Com. Yep. Make Mike pack a lot of boxes. Mike, we want you to be busy. He does it out of his house. Oh, yeah. He's doing it out of his house. But you know what I love? You're an independent software developer right. who's doing what he loves, doing a Absolutely. great product, mm -hmm. and you're competing against Microsoft, and you're yeah. making it. Oh, yeah. And I think that's wonderful. And you're it's making them do a better job because they look at this. What, what is that plane? Well, right now we're on the Mars rocket, but I just put but us back to Earth. Earth. Uh -oh. And so what we're going to have is something that's incredibly overpowered Let's because see all it. this thick Take air... Off. Now, it's not used to quite this much gravity, but it's got way more air than it's used to. So it almost instantly is over its maximum structural load and basically just falls up. Have you your flight up. with the uh, Blue Angels? It's kind of similar, isn't it? <laughs> so it's fighting gravity, but it's got more air than it knows what to do with. Right. Air, after being on Mars, being on Earth is like it's living easy. in pea soup. It's just solid <laughs> air. And so, of course, we can get you know Cessna 172s or it's airliners, so whatever fun. you want. That's a little more acclimated to this particular environment of Earth. <laughs> Austin Meyer is the creator of X-Plane. You can tell he's got the enthusiasm of a guy who's doing what he loves. Austin, we're glad you're doing it. Well, thank thanks you. for making a great piece of software. Hey, my pleasure. X-Plane.com is the website to buy it. If you want more helpful tips to get the most out of your X-Plane experience, Austin's written an article for us, which is great. We're glad to have it at screensavers.com. It's great to meet you. Thanks for Thank you. Here. Really my pleasure. It. Now, let's uh, fly on over to the Nook for a web tip from Jessica. Wow, uh, so realistic. It made cool? me even a little air yeah. sick there, guys. Yeah. Okay. So RAM is one of the most integral parts of your PC, right? But it is so confusing. Which RAM fits into which motherboard? Well, the solution is to head on over to Crucial.com, and here you choose your system, and Crucial will tell you which RAM fits your MOBO. The only drawback is that they don't sell RAM memory. Darn it. Well, stay put. We're going to optimize your gaming experience with...